Welcome back, you f***ing maniacs. We got another really quick guide today that's going to show you how you or your viewers can control your Gobi lights during your live stream. It does not require Lumia or IFTTT paid services. That's right, you get it for the low, low price of free 99 all day today, all year, you name it. It's free to you. You're welcome. We'll do things like change colors, change the brightness, the temperature, preloaded dynamic scenes, your DIY scenes, and snapshots. The first thing we're going to have to do though is head over to the Govi Home app on your phone to be able to apply for an API key. So sit back, shut up, and follow the clicks. From the Govi Home app, we're going to click in the bottom right corner to click on your profile. After we get into that menu, we're going to click on the gear in the top right to go into your settings. You scroll down a little bit, you'll see the apply for API key button. You'll click on that. Type your name into the box, whatever name you want to be called by Govi. And then the reason for application. You can see my reasoning there is pretty simple. Control my lights from a program. Check the box that you've read their terms of agreement and then click submit. You'll receive an email to whatever email you have registered with Govi. Mine came through in exactly three minutes from the time I clicked that submit button. Not sure how long yours will take, but I don't expect it to take much longer than that. After we get the Govi API key, we're going to create the Govi folder on our desktop or anywhere that it's easily accessible. You'll see I made mine. It says Govi. Real simple. Then we're going to right click on that folder and click copy as path. That's going to come in handy here very quickly. After we create the export, we're going to open up our streamer bot. From the streamer bot menu, we're going to click on the import button at the top. You'll see the import string. And assuming you've already downloaded the Mustache Maniac Gobi Lighting Control from Ko-Fi, you will drag and drop into the import string box. From there, you'll see it'll load nine actions, one queue, and eight different commands. Real simple. Click the import button. The commands are being set to disabled. We already knew that because that's how StreamerBot does things. After that, you'll get an entire group of actions called Gobi Lighting Controls. Really simple here. Our next step is going to be configuring the Gobi Lighting Controls for your specific setup. You're going to click on the Gobi Setup action, which seems pretty self-explanatory to me. You're going to double click on the set global Govi file path. And here's where we're going to paste that file path we copied earlier. You'll notice if you right click copied it, that there's quotation marks. You got to delete the last quotation mark and then come right to the beginning and delete that first one too. So it doesn't throw an error for you. Click OK. Then we need to update our API key. So you're going to have to go to your email that Govi should have already sent you sitting in your inbox. Double click on the set global Govi API key. Copy your API key from your email and then paste it into this box here. Once you do, you click OK and save up at the top. Now you've got two options. You can open up your stream chat and type exclamation govi i n i t like that, or my preferred method, right click on the trigger and click test trigger. It does the same thing, you'll get the same result. After that's ran, you'll know you're good because your chat will say, congratulations, your Govi lights are now initialized and can be controlled via streamer bot. Woohoo! We got that far. If we want to verify this, we're going to minimize our chat and our streamer bot here and check our Govi folder. What we're looking for are all of the devices associated with our account, which you'll see we've got the devices currently associated with our API. You double click on one of the text files drag it over here so you all can see that we now have basically a configuration page. In here we've got the device name which does nothing but tell us personally what device it is, but it's got the device ID and the model number. These are the two pieces of information that we're going to need if we want to do any sort of controls as far as changing the colors, brightness, etc. that tells the API which device we're wanting to control. All right, so now we've got everything configured for your specific API key, which means that we can now control the lights specific to your account. With that being said, you'll see in the big red text here, run this once or when you edit C 
scenes and snapshots. If you're creating new DIY scenes or new snapshots after you've initially ran it, it's no big deal. Go into your Govi folder, delete these text files. They'll repopulate again when you run the command again, and they'll have the updated most current information. Nerd alert, we're about to go into the weeds just a little bit on how this works and how I broke it down. If you don't want to do that, just go ahead and skip to the next chapter of the video um, and continue on. Otherwise, listen up. Very, very broad overview. The next action in the group is the Gobi controls. Big red text here, don't touch. Why? Because the way that I set this up is one single block of code in here in the Gobi controls. You see there's no triggers. It is just a holder of all the code. Every action that adjusts your lighting, whether it be brightness, color, temperature, power, scenes, and or snapshots, are all held within this action. One giant execute block, and these purely call a method within that block. So I know it says don't touch, but you know, I'm a fing rebel, so here we go. Opening up the code, I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit just so you can see, whoops, wrong one. All of our different methods that we call upon are located within this single block. So your brightness, color, temperature, power, yada yada, are all housed within one block. This made it easier and cleaner for myself rather than recompiling and re-executing code for different actions. I thought it'd be better to just call on the same action within. Um, each one has their own API call associated with them. So essentially, the brightness change structure that's required comes in under the API device control URL, and then the type would be the capabilities range in the instance of brightness. Here we got our math for pulling the integer or pulling the string, converting it to an integer. And then we've got a couple parameters checked up here to make sure that it falls within the range, yada, yada. Um, if you're the nerdy type and you're an actual coder, you can go in and check it out and change things as you see fit. If you're not, then just leave it and know the shit works. Moving on. All right, so if you stuck around for the nerdy part, cool, we're moving on. If you didn't, welcome back. The next thing we're gonna do is actually change something on our lights. Um, in order to do that, what I would recommend is picking what you wanna do, say a color, right-clicking on the color action and duplicating it. At this point, we'll have another action that does the same damn thing. We're gonna change this to top, oops, Top shelf, red, to make it really easy for ourselves. I know that this is gonna change my top shelf light to red. Click OK. And now we've got a new action. In that action, set argument device ID to your device ID here. Going over to our text document, we've got our device ID. Copy it and paste it. Click OK. Super simple, your model here. Holy right here we've got your model. Copy it and paste it. Click OK. Now for the pick color specifically, we're using the streamer bot sub action. And we're gonna select whatever color we want. We can go to find custom color, make this as red as we want to. Add the custom color, click it, and then we're gonna click OK. The code itself is gonna do the math to convert it into the value that the Govi API needs, so that's literally it. You click on it, pick the color, and then boom. Now this is gonna change our top shelf to red. We're gonna save it. And again, we can type Govi color into our chat, or we can just right click and test a trigger. After we do that, within a few seconds, we should see that our lights have turned red. All right. So now we showed you how to change the color of a specific device. That same logic applies to all the other controls as far as temperature, power, snapshots, etc. Um, and just know that this was for one device. If you've got multiple devices, you want to change all their colors, then you need to either duplicate the actions separately or you can actually nest them into the same action. So if I wanted to change all of my lights to red, I would go in here duplicate the sub action, duplicate the sub action, and duplicate the sub action. 
Notice I did not duplicate the color because it's already stored this variable. So if I want all of my lights to be the same red, I don't need to do that again. I would update the second device ID to say the bottom shelf and then the second model to whatever the bottom shelf is and then it's gonna execute the method again. Remember, StreamerBot works sequentially. So it comes through to the top, it sets the first device and the first model, picks the color, and then it runs the code. It'll then continue after changing that color, second device, second model, and run the code again. That means that you could string these together and make a really long list of sub actions that'll run from top to bottom. Keep in mind with a very long list and multiple API calls, there may be delays between light sets changing colors, temperatures, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. So put that in the back of your brain. Additionally, it does not need to be tied to a command. You could set this up for a trigger for when you get a new subscriber or maybe bits or a gift bomb or whatever, get creative with it. Let me know what you plan on doing. I'm excited to see the possibilities. That was really simple. Um, I tried to make it as plug and play as I possibly could. I'm really excited at the possibilities and what everyone's gonna be able to do with this newfound tool. Um, it's up on my Ko-Fi currently. I have submitted it to StreamerBot to hopefully become an approved official extension, waiting for the approval to come through on that. I do want to take a moment to give a big shout out to Grand Admiral Quack. He's actually the one who had the problem or the idea of wanting to control the Govi lights. And I don't even have Govi lights right now. They got delivered today though. So he let me control his lights while he was live on stream. Uh, went a lot of back and forth to kind of make this into the polished product that it is now. The next video I put out is going to show you kind of how to string multiple changes together um, as well as tying them to different events and stuff just to just to polish up and show some completed ideas with the base knowledge that you gained from this video. For now, again, Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe so you can check out the next video showing more in-depth on what you can do. Until next time, catch you later, you f***ing maniacs.